Right then, ladies and gents, that is it. Pre-season is over. Started off with a massive win against Liverpool, Crystal Palace, Melbourne victory, three wins, then a draw, and then a loss against Atletico Madrid. And today there, it felt like a pre-season friendly, didn't it? It felt like the energy had sort of left the building. It felt like the tempo had dropped. It felt like Manchester United were, cut. were at the end of a very exhausting pre-season tour. And they, it, uh, well, we've had two games in 24 hours. It's exactly how that game played out. But I'm going to run through everything that happened in that game. My analysis. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, make sure you drop a like on the video. But obviously, first and foremost, it was great to see Eric Ten Hag in his new home at Old Trafford today. The crowd gave him a nice welcome. Of course they did. I like the suit combo. The suit and the shirt combo. Suave. I like that. I want to wear that. It's a good outfit. But Manchester United in that first half, let's be completely honest, we're, we were just off the pace. We were completely off the pace. Um, obviously, when you switch the whole team out like we did, because we played basically our first team that's going to start against Brighton, against Atletico Madrid yesterday in Oslo. But we were better. We might have lost that game yesterday, but I think we played better in that game yesterday. Uh, but also, the main, the, probably the main takeaway I'm going to take from today is the squad depth. It's clearly not there. Now, during the preseason, I was actually praising how Manchester United in the first half to the second half, despite switching the, the, basically the whole teams out, I said like the style of play, we kept it quite similar. I don't think we can say that really for today. Probably the player I'm most excited about to talk about, of course I am, it's, that, it's Lissandro Martinez. He was exactly what I thought he was going to be today. No, no Hollywood. It's not Hollywood. He's not going to steal the headlines, but he's not been signed for that. Ice. Ice cool in possession. Calm, composed. I'm not sure he misplaced a pass. If he did, it didn't really cause any danger. Rafael Varane, on the other hand, he looked really off it today. He looked very completely uncomposed next to Lissandro Martinez. He got 60 minutes. Uh, he's not going to be fit, I don't think, to start against Brighton. So I imagine we're probably going to see Lindelof and Maguire. And we all know the problems that those two can have alongside each other. I'm excited, really excited to see how how different we play with Lissandro Martinez as the season goes on. Unfortunately, that's what happens when you sign a player a little bit late. Lissandro Martinez could have and should have been fit for this game against Brighton. But because the deal took a little bit longer, and remember, of course, uh, there's about 10 days, I think it was, uh, between the deal for Martinez being announced and him actually being confirmed. That wasn't necessarily Manchester United's fault to do with Brexit, visa issues, blah, blah, blah. But of course, there was another player who returned today. And it was Ronaldo's first game under Eric Ten Hag. And, well, it was, it, was, it was exactly what I expected from Ronaldo. He, he missed a chance early, early doors. Great uh, sort of, what's the word? Great, jeez, I've completely forgotten the word. Anyway, Van der Beek won the ball in the middle. Anticipation, jeez, there we go, back here. Anticipation for Van der Beek, won the ball. Ronaldo left foot, spooned it over. But Ronaldo, I'll tell you that the thing I found different to Ronaldo compared to Martial today was positionally, Ronaldo last season, something that happened a lot because we were naff, he dropped deep. He would always drop towards the, his own half. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. He'd want to be, he'd want to be in the build-up. That's not really going to work in Ten Hag's system as much. We need that number nine to be in that number nine position. It's exactly how we got that goal. Ahmad Diallo's not a number nine. The only reason he got that goal as a centre forward is because he chased that Teles shot in. Boom. Easy tapping. Ronaldo dropped deep a lot. I don't know whether that was what Ten Hag was speaking to him about uh, during the game in terms of like, hold your position, stay up front. We need you there as a number nine. No, I don't really know that. You don't know that. So we can't speculate on that. But Ronaldo today was um, kind of ex what I expected Ronaldo to be today. I didn't expect him to be sort of lighting it up. And I, and I think, you know, one second here. I've accidentally, my thing has run out of battery. Let me do this manually. Um, it was kind of what I expected from Ronaldo today, right? I wasn't expecting him to pull up trees. I was expecting him to be massively short match fitness. And he was. And i tell you what, it seems like there's a bit of a talking point that's happened after the game. I don't really want to speak about it here because I want to get it confirmed before I speak about it. But I think I may well have a video coming out very soon after this match reaction about Ronaldo. Uh, James Garner was somebody who, you know, we've been calling to see James Garner during this preseason, haven't we? Unfortunately for him, it was really bad timing with the injuries, wasn't it? Really badly timed with the injuries. But he, I think, impressed. I think he was a, a little bit... Showed a little bit of a lack of composure at points, but he had the sort of tenacity that we need inside that midfield. It looks like he could probably be a, a decent backup at the moment in terms of levels to what Fred is doing. And I'm not, I'm Fred's not the best inside that role anyway. But James Garner, I think we, sh we should not be letting him go out on loan. We don't have enough strength and depth in that midfield to consider letting Garner go anywhere at all. 
the strength in depth really got shown today. And I'll tell you one play, player I think we can all say that we're happy to see that he's shone was Alejandro Garnacho, who was definitely the standout player in the first half and the player who really just looked like he was going to make things happen. And they're the sorts of players at Old Trafford that will get you to the edge of your seat and get you excited. Because when he had the ball, he got his head up, head down, whatever. He ran straight towards the defenders at pace and he got past them. Trickery, looked confident, got past his defender quite a few times. And he was the main threat that we had. Because let's be honest, to Heath Chong in that game, he's played himself out of a Manchester United show. To Heath Chong's had loan spells. To Heath Chong has come back to the club. To Heath Chong's had plenty of opportunities this preseason. To Heath Chong is not it. And I'll tell you what. I'm not sure Anthony Alanga is as, a, as an alternative to uh, Jaden Sancho. I think Anthony Alanga can play, have a place inside that squad. I think he could be a good squad player. I think he's sort of the, the attacking equivalent of a Scott McTominay. I don't think he's a crap player in any way, shape or form, but I don't think he should be starting for United every single week. Certainly not at this point in his career. I think what we've seen today without Jaden Sancho in the last couple of games, uh, how uh, wafer thin we are in terms of real quality inside this squad now that's something that will not and cannot be solved in one summer transfer window that strength in depth comes from building uh, like a trifle and if this is the first layer of the trifle this summer this is what we're going to have to improve over the next couple of summers and just keep buying smart players so that the squad strength goes throughout that's what we need today was basically just a run out for the kids felt like an fa youth cup game uh hansen came on for his debut 17 year old midfielder and he what well he's the first player to come on uh, i think first debut under of course it's first debut under 18 hearts the preseason but by the end of the game we had um hansen we had shortiere we had ahmed on the pitch we had hannibal we had zidane iqbal uh, we had everybody <laughs> well not everybody but an absolute ton of youngsters on the pitch and i'll tell you what a shout out to ethan laird for that second half performance i think in that first half uh, well, the game really passed ethan there by making some poor mistakes he looked a little bit off it I don't know what he ate at halftime. I don't know whether Eric Ten Hag had a word in his ear at halftime. But Ethan Lair came out in that second half and played phenomenal by comparison. Now, Samuel Luckhurst from Manchester Evening News has said that he is going to Watford on loan for the season. I think that's probably the best move for his career. Selfishly, we probably all prefer to keep him at Manchester United as a backup to Diogo Delo ahead of Aaron Wan-Bissaka. But what's going on with wan Don't think he was in the squad today. No news of any injuries. Not sure. Phil Jones, of course, he's still doing his preseason. Somebody buy Phil Jones, please. Somebody buy Phil Jones. All in need. Somebody buy Phil Jones, please. Thank you. But Eric Ten Hag, I think, will overall be happy with how this preseason went. Uh, it, it sort of petered out towards the end, didn't it? Our intensity on that preseason tour exploded with the Liverpool game. It continued with Melbourne victory. It got really sexy against Crystal Palace with some of those goals. And that late equaliser against Aston Villa at the end of an exhausting two-week tour, it was like, well, OK, well, the players switched off a little bit. Atletico Madrid, we did everything we needed to do against Atletico Madrid, apart from finish, and then they came up with a goal and the quality from Jao Felix at the end. Yeah, that's Atletico Madrid. It's exactly what they do. Today, the quality wasn't there. The strength in depth, it obviously isn't there. And we had those concerns for the Atletico Madrid game, and we saw them there today when basically the whole first team wasn't playing. But I think Ten Hag will be happy with how the whole preseason has gone. I don't think he will be happy at the fact that um, Martinez won't be fit to start. And I'll be honest, I can't believe I've gone eight and a half minutes there without mentioning Christian Eriksen, who again today, just I am going to really enjoy it when well, my shoulders are moving. I'm going to really enjoy watching Christian Eriksen play for United this season. He's an absolute, he's a mustard. When you watch him play, oozes class in the same way that you, what you, Martinez already, I just look at him and go, just give him the ball. I want him to receive the ball from, from the goalkeeper. I want him to be the person who brings the ball out from the back because I've got more confidence in him. And I imagine the players are going to have more confidence in him and it will make United better at playing out from the back with the ball. Something that got exposed again today is our defensive transitions. Every time we lost the ball going forward, there were spaces in behind. There, were, there is. And Tellez, geez, he got caught out of space. Somebody buy Tellez. Somebody buys Jones. Somebody buy Tellez. Somebody buy. Buy? I think so anyway. I think we get good money for him. Let's get some deals done. More of this squad needs to leave. But at the same time, as we saw today, we need some strength in depth. Cristiano Ronaldo, it was a pretty invisible performance from him. But it's his first 45 minutes of a preseason. Uh, who can fairly judge on that? I'm not sure. 
But I'm not sure what he was speaking to Eric Ten Hag about. James Garner, I liked how he played. Garnacho was the exciting one for me today. But you let me know what you think in the comments below. How, what's your reaction overall to the preseason? I'm going to come tomorrow, more, uh, tomorrow at lunchtime uh, with a video looking at the full squad now. We're looking at the squad strength in depth. Later on today, I might have a quick video out on Cristiano Ronaldo after something happened after the game, by the looks of it. That'll be an interesting one. But make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. And this time next week, we may have beaten Brighton and have our first three points of the Premier League season. Fingers crossed.